My name is Dr. Felucia. I'm a licensed psychologist. And today I'm going to be talking to you about gaslighting and what it is. Gaslighting is a term that you may or may not have heard. It's used commonly in the self-help community. And while some people are concerned that it is being overused, it can actually be a quite helpful tool for you to understand when you are you may be the target of some sort of um, emotional control, manipulation, or abuse. So let me get started and explain to you exactly what gaslighting is. Gaslighting occurs when somebody tries to have you deny the reality of your experience or your perception or what's going on around you. And that frequently, although not always, happens with emotions. The term gaslighting comes from an old movie called Gaslight, in which um, a married couple, well, the wife and the married couple was experiencing gaslighting from her husband. He would from yet yeah, from her husband, who was trying to engage in emotionally controlling and abusive tactics. And one thing that he did is he would go to the attic and um, tamper, he would turn off the lights, I believe, in the attic, which would make the gas lights flicker. And she would think that she was losing her mind when the gas lights would flicker, when he was actually the one doing this and denying it, you know, denying that he had anything to um, to, to uh, do with the flickering lights that she saw. So anyway, that's where the term comes from. In day-to-day -day interactions, you're going to see gaslighting occur when somebody, um, use, and this, per this person um, is typically engaging in manipulative tactics is that they will try to get you to deny the reality of your emotional experience. And so, um, for instance, if someone says that they were um, humiliated by something that someone else did, or they felt angry, the person who was engaging in gaslighting might deny what they did altogether or say, it wasn't that big a deal. You shouldn't feel angry. The purpose of gaslighting is to make the person feel like they um, are not perceiving things correctly, that their perceptions are faulty, and that they might be um, losing their mind um, and, aren't, and aren't an accurate judge of what they're feeling inside. And so those are all, those are some of the experiences that people have had when they have experienced gaslighting. And so, um, and in gaslighting, um, gaslighting can occur. Um, the, the one key to remember with gaslighting is that it often occurs where there is a power differential between the person engaging in gaslighting and the person who is being gaslit. So for example, um, in the situation that I talked to you about before in that movie, um, the woman was in a fragile position because she had just lost a close relative. And so that husband was using his power over her in the movie to try and make her lose emotional control, doubt her sanity, doubt her perceptions. You can also see gaslighting occurring in another power differential, differential relationship that occurs between a parent and a child. Usually there's, um, you know, there, there oftentimes is one and that's simply because an adult is bigger than a child, they have more um, authority. And so, a situation in which that can occur is when maybe a child says that they were angry because of something that happened and the parent responds, you weren't angry about that, or that's not what happened, really minimizing and invalidating what that child's experience was. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes things like this happen where it's a one-off and maybe there's miscommunication, but gaslighting is deliberate it happens very frequently. And so over time, it has an erosive process of the person's emotions and their perceptions. You'll also see gaslighting occur. And as a quick segue, part of my work involves cultural and spiritual abuse. So you'll see, um, you can see gaslighting occur in cultural situations, especially, especially when there's a very strict hierarchy. And so the person who is doing the gaslighting often has power simply because of because of their position in the culture, whether due to their gender or due to their age. So, for instance, in cultures where there is a high emphasis on the respect of elders, you may see older people 
do this to younger people. Um, and it's simply because they, you know, they are taking advantage of the power that's been given to them by the culture to suppress or minimize somebody else's uh, emotional experience. This can also happen in spiritual situations, especially when um, somebody is in an interaction with the spiritual leader and the spiritual leader is using their authority to, again, try and control someone else's emotional experience and mainly to help make them or attempt to make them deny what is going on around them. And so you can see this um, in spiritual situations, cultural situations, basically where there is a power differential. Okay, and so um, sometimes, you know, gaslighting can occur in many different forms. You can see it when somebody, you know, like I talked about before, denying somebody's emotional experience or validating it. It can also occur when somebody just deliberately, you know, lies and says they didn't say something or they did say something. And so when we see um, abusive situations in in um, either romantic relationships or parent-child relationships, sometimes the person in power will just deny what they did. They might say, I don't remember saying that, or I never did that, even though they clearly did. And so the person who is on the receiving end of this um, has less agency and less ability to confront the person because of that power differential that I talked about before. I've read of situations um, and heard of situations personally and professionally where people who were raised by abusive parents would deny doing things such as hitting them, giving their possessions away. And when the child would try to bring it up, they would you know, completely deny it or um, they would say something very negative about the child's character. So they would deflect from this situation, say that you're very ungrateful, you're a horrible person, you're a liar. So even though gaslighting can occur in many different ways, the end result of it is the person who is experiencing that gaslighting to doubt their sanity, doubt their ability to perceive things in an accurate way, or just maybe deny that what happened um, happened at all. So that's a brief primer on gaslighting. I also want to talk about what gaslighting is not because, you know, um, it's important to understand how gaslighting differs from typical situations that we can experience in relationships. So let's say two people disagree about something. A disagreement in and of itself is not an attempt of one person to gaslight another. You know, people may agree, may disagree about, um, you know, the severity of the impact of something. Maybe they're watching the news. One person thinks, oh, that situation wasn't that big a deal. And someone else thinks it might be devastating. And those two people may just have two conflicting, differing perspectives. That is not one person gaslighting another. OK, um, sometimes people just think very differently about certain topics such as religion, politics, child rearing, science, all these other things. And that is not gaslighting. What gaslighting is, again, there has to be, or there usually is a power differential or there's some sort of um, advantage that one person has over the other, okay? So it's really important to understand that. And also with gaslighting, it doesn't just happen in um, you know, spiritual or cultural situations or relationships. It can also happen within professions, okay? So teachers can do this to students. Um, physicians or medical professionals can do this to their patients. This is called gaslighting. And, um, and this happens when the professional doesn't understand or may not be able to explain the symptoms. And so instead of trying to understand their patient's perspective, they'll say something like, you know, it's all in your head. You're not experiencing this. You're just too stressed. Giving kind of like blanket statements to what is going on instead of really trying to address the root of the problem. And again, it serves to make the person on the receiving end doubt the reality of what's going on. So somebody in this sort of situation who's going to see the doctor will start thinking, well, gosh, am I really having these um, symptoms or is it just, you know, all in my head? Maybe I'm just making it up. And that is very dangerous because there could be something serious going on that they um, are not able to get help, from, help for. 
So that can occur in situations with medical professionals. It can also occur in therapy situations. And so people have talked about very damaging interactions they've had with therapists who will also gaslight them and invalidate their position. And if you think about it, um, the power differential there is the therapist is supposed to be the expert. People who are getting therapy, you know, have these um, assumptions that whoever is there to help them is an expert and that they have their best interests in hand. And so therapists or anybody in any kind of profession can exploit this trust and this authority um, and use it to invalidate the person's experience. So I will um, do another video on gaslighting in the therapy situation because I think it's really important for people to understand when this occurs and what to do with it. Uh, so I really hope that helps. If you have any questions or you have any additional comments, please comment below and also subscribe so you can get more updates and information about videos that I post. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.